but yeah, like it, it's it's amazing. I think it, it's phenomenal, and like I like both Volume One and Volume Three. If I had to place them in order, I'd say it's probably two, three, one. Um, like three is really good and it's really close, but it's more conventional in that it follows mm. a chronological narrative. Uh, but two, just like with the with the brilliant way it interweaves this yeah. evening, is I think just just impressive. Um, like it's the kind of thing that I, I, I've long believed that, like English professors need to actually start taking a look at comics. You know, writing professors need to start taking a look at comics as a source of critical material to evaluate in classes and talk to students about because there's so much that can be said and like especially in in some of you know my favorites some of the things that i think are you know the great stories to come out of graphic novels out of after the last you know few decades Mm -hmm. things like sandman things like this i think there's a lot of really good stuff to look at that is just kind of not given any credit oh it's a comic yeah exactly yeah like that's that's so easily said dismissively but like a story like this that's so tightly interwoven i mean i'll take this over crime and punishment any day <laughs> agreed actually um and no yeah I, I think you're absolutely right like when it comes to like the the academic appreciation of comics one there, there needs to be more of it just because of how proliferated it is um, and, and I don't mean, like, in the yeah. respect of, like, oh, we can see in 1930, uh, you know, Detective Comics came out and it was very valuable now as it sold for $4 million, which is cool. And and if anyone wants to hand me a copy yeah. of Detective Comics 27, like, yeah, go for it. <laughs> um, but I, I think you're right. Like, the, the narratives that comic creators come up with, both visually written and then the myriad of ways in which they can interconnect those two formats... Um, have really allowed for comics to be an elevated medium. Like, I always enjoy... When I, someone ever asks, what's your favorite type of art? I say comics. Um, and I've, I've thought about this a lot. So my partner, as, as you know, as, as YouTube land, now you know, my partner, um, she is a... She has her master's degree in um, art, media, and design. Uh, or, sorry... Um, God, what is her IAMD? Um, inter, I think it's interdisciplinary art, media, and design. So it's like she did like 3D printing, sculpting, metalwork, all of it. And then she has her BA in fine arts. And throughout her education, she took lessons um, breaking down comics. Um, so the it's starting to get there. It's starting to be taught um, more. Uh, I wish I could have taken some of those classes. It'd be pretty cool. But... Um, When I, I've broken down and, and spoken with her about it, and then you know we've tried to break down the subject of how to make it, and perhaps this is me trying to sound more professional than I am or whatever. But when I've tried to come up with a title for myself, other than like host, right? Because I, I am a host of this show and, and of my my regular show. Um, I I've gone okay. Is it journalism? Is is it technically journalism? I'm interviewing people. Um, like we have our podcast here, or our show, whatever you want to call this. Um, but I've also interviewed creators and comic book writers and, and artists. So it's technically journalism. I'm like, okay. So it's entertainment journalism, perhaps. Um, but a, a title that I, I like the sound of, I don't use it frequently, but I like the sound of it, is... Um, now it's escaping my mind, of course. Of course. Oh, sequential art critic. So in art, there's, you know, you can have a single painting. You can then have a triptych, so three pieces of art that line up to tell some sort of story um, or show feeling. And then there's sequential art, which is the the best way I can think to describe a comic. Because you have a variety of panels lining up to tell you a story. Or in, in Phonogram's case, seven issues of those. To tell yeah. you a complex story, um, right? So, in my 
experience of comics, I, I have found that the way that stories get told can be so much more interesting, right? Like, if you pick up art, um, you can look at it, especially if it's like a painting or drawing, and, and you can appreciate that. And there's amazing art out there. Um, but then there's comic book artists like Alex Ross, who most, you know, pops in my mind, who are taking yeah. comic art and putting the level of love and detail and skill into it like a classical painter might where actually hold on let's not break anything conrad so uh, alex ross for anyone out there who doesn't know is known for painting gorgeous comics like this one oof oof yeah, yeah exactly and the book itself every page That's... is this like it's that level of painting and this is where i think like this version is, mm -hmm. is he the uh the oh god the name is escaping um kingdom come did he yep. do kingdom come he did kingdom come he I was did gonna say, justice I, I, know that, I know that art style i know that yeah yeah so, so that's like an artist who's taking comics and through skill elevating the visual medium to what i would call high art uh, then you have writers like Kieran Gillen who are taking a, a written narrative and turning them from like a standard, like a normal book, like a written fiction book, and using the visual component, being able to tear it apart and reformat it. And that's why I think... Well, yeah, so, like, mm -hmm. I think one of the things, because we were talking earlier, like how do you kind of how do you convince you know academic society that this mm -hmm. is something that's worth looking at i mean I, i'm not sure i think they'll have to kind of get there on their own at a certain point um but like i think the study of comics is probably a lot closer to the study of like film yes you know like studying like movies than it is to some studying like you know novels oh, um yeah. and i think that like especially one thing that you see and I mean, we're we're seeing this more in popular novels, you know, stories like uh, everything from uh, the Song of Ice and Fire series, uh, Game of Thrones also, for those who don't know, you know, yeah, yeah, Song of Ice and Fire, Game of Thrones, but also things like, I mean, hell, uh, Twilight did this, you know, where it's like different chapters are told from different characters' perspectives. You know, or like, uh, I guess Twilight didn't do that. Twilight was all from Bella's. But anyway, I haven't read it. <laughs> um, but like the the telling of a story from perspective, different perspectives, um, you know, it's something that is obviously very key in Singles Club. I think one of the things this gets at is the idea that the way you tell a story is oftentimes as important or more important than what the story you're telling is. Because like if you, you know, ripped phonogram apart, and you just re like you put the whole thing chronologically and told the story, it might still be interesting, but it wouldn't have those those moments of realization mm -hmm. that it has now. Because like imagine you like you're just reading it, you know, and you're seeing Penny like ask Mark to dance and we see that mark we've seen the whole time that mark is dealing with the ghost of his ex and then you know she asks him and he says no but we immediately understand that oh he's saying no not because he doesn't like her you know but because of this and that i think that takes so much away and it i think it removes our ability to feel for these characters so so closely because in in writing a lot of novels um so most novels are written from a third person perspective yeah. first person novels are more common these days than they probably used to be uh but most novels are written from a third person perspective um in the study of literature people talk about whether a novel is written from third person limited perspective or third person omniscient oh, okay. usually things are on like a spectrum here where it's like it's never completely one or the other you know there's always a bit of a blend and this is basically the idea of 
does how closely does the camera follow the main character you know to put it in, in film terms mm-hmm. in third person limited the camera's close behind the main character and we're only told about things that are roughly in their area and we're not told about the internal thoughts of other characters because those are outside this character's experience yeah you know in third person omniscient perspective we see everything we see the whole we see the world we see other characters thoughts and the truth is that few novels are all one or the other they often move between the two they jump to different characters and we get glimpses into different people Mm -hmm. um but i think that the more you zoom out that camera the harder it is to put yourself in the shoes of any one person in that scene because the more information you have the harder it is to kind of hone in and, and parse out their limited perspective yeah well i mean like like because you already you already know yeah like you were saying so like if you had yeah. that third person omniscient information um the ending of that first issue you described to us where Penny goes to ask him you know do you want to dance and he shoots her down and she's devastated but she then has that realization that, you know, screw it, I'm going to go dance for me. If you have all of the information, he, her reasoning behind feeling that way gets diminished. And it takes away from her experience, I find. Yeah. Right. Because, like, she's not, like, her choice isn't any, you know, less important. But we already see that, like, I mean, he wasn't being a jerk. He was mm-hmm. just wrapped up in his own feelings. And you know we see it's like okay great she kind of took the best lesson from it but also her reaction that you know he was being a dick is not not true you know and and so it things like that are yeah i i think in comic books especially it's really cool to see experimental storytelling like this where you know, like you get issues like Kid with Knife and it's got no dialogue. Or there's an issue in here that follows the DJs. And so every single panel is just look is zoomed in on the DJs behind the booth as they talk oh. to various people off screen and talk to each other. Well, that's pretty cool. And so like yeah, because it, it follows Seth and Silent Girl the DJs and oh, every okay. single panel like it the frame never moves it is always right here on the DJ booth and they you know talk to people who are off screen they move we see the lighting change as things happen inside the club um but like it's great and it's it's very i mean like it, it's very experimental in my mind but it's cool like, yeah it's it's cool to get such a different issue thrown in here in the middle of this yeah definitely and, and given that that is literally their perspective right they're stuck in that booth doing their job right. while they're doing what they do yeah. um and i think too like the the lens with which to go to film that each character experiences also tremendously lends to our understanding of them and how they function um, within their world um yeah. and like to, when you're mentioning about the, the study of comics being more like film it was it's interesting that you bring that up um just a few days ago i watched a, a youtube video by francis manipole who's a, a comic book artist he's worked for dc he's worked for marvel um fantastic artist um and very deliberately when he talks about how he makes comics he talks in the terms of film. He's like, so in, in how he starts this video even is very cinegraph. Um, he uses cinematography basically to show you all these yeah. shots. And he talks about an establishing shot and, and how you can use these different perspectives to line up a world. Um, so I agree. I, I think the study of comics itself yeah. will become more like the study of well, film. Yeah. I mean, hell, like when you're when you're drafting a movie i mean people who are painstaking about the process they storyboard their movies 
you know, and, and what are storyboards, if not basically, you know, rough comics to yeah. to draw out the movie so that you have an idea of what it's going to look like. For example, like um, The Matrix, which is, you know, one of those classic movies that really stands out and I think feels a lot like a comic book. Uh, like The Matrix was obsessively storyboarded. Oh, okay. I've watched I've watched making up stuff where you see that like they like painstakingly you know drafted their storyboards and then copied those shots for the movie like some of the most iconic shots you know like over Trinity's shoulder as you know the the officer comes up like that's in the storyboard you know the wow. the agent like pummeling somebody in the stomach you know with these rapid fire fists it's in the storyboard even as it's shot from you know I think. I think it's shot from above, above like, right? Yeah, it's shot like right above, and he's like pummeling the guy. Like these things are in the storyboards, um, but because the shots that you take and use really matter, uh, especially for some of these stories. And I mean, some stories they don't, right? Like some stories you don't need super fancy or evocative shots for, but some stories like this, you know, like your your shots can really change the way the story is told. Mm-hmm. The sto- the issue about uh, Seth and Silent Girl, the DJs, would be way less interesting if, you know, the camera was always moving around and we were seeing the club and stuff. But because we've got this consistent shot of them behind the booth, we focus in on these really minor details and changes, the way the lighting plays off of them, you know, their movements and interactions with each other, the way Seth is talking to somebody off screen, you know, as he like listens to their song requests and goes like, Hmm, hmm, no, you know, like (laughs) we we look at those things and like, we, we really focus in on all those little details where I think they would get lost if it was always jumping around and stuff like that. So Tyler, uh, absolutely. I, I agree. I think the way that the comics are studied and the way that people should read comics is like I said, a screenplay. Um, and now I'm curious if we will ever see like the matrix screenplay turn into a comic or something. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing about phonogram and, and the complex story. I hope the people out there in YouTube land go and get it. Cause it sounds really sick. I'm going to make sure I pick up, the, the three of them so i can get a hold of them and read them um but yeah thank you so much for coming yeah. on thanks for having me again all right i'll see you later all right